There we go. Okay, so I just have to accept. Okay, we can go one more slide. Um, yeah, so I just hit 15 years this month. Um, started in 2008. Is that right? No, seven. Yeah. Anyway, um, and I have belonged to the National Association of Professional Organizers since I started, and I've earned all kinds of certificates that you can see on that slide. And uh, probably five or six years ago, I got certified in feng shui as well, which is really interesting. And I love doing sometimes with my clients when they ask. Um, and married and two young 20 year olds that are fantastic young men um that's me so let's go to the next slide and we will talk about memories so memories are something remembered from the past a recollection Usually when I do this um, in person, we talk a lot about what memories are and what memorabilia is, but um, uh, if, and also um, I will take questions all throughout. So if you wanna signal Ari um, at some point or jump in, um, questions are fine throughout. Um, and then, so if memories are a recollection of the past, then memorabilia tends to be the objects that represent that somehow. Um, that bring about um, our memories of people or events or things that we did in the past. Um, and so that's what memorabilia is and photos, etc. cetera. Um, next slide. So often it's important for my clients sometimes to separate the object from the memory, right? So I can't tell you the number of sewing baskets. Grandma's sewing baskets. This is grandma's sewing basket. Um, and then if I start talking with clients, um, you know, many of them have their own sewing basket, um, but, you know, they feel compelled to hold on to this sewing basket because it was grandma's. Um, so either incorporate it into your own, use it as your own, um, but a dusty grandma's sewing basket up in the attic does us no good. Um, and actually thread deteriorates with time, so really will don't do no good. But um, what I find is often people um, get very stuck with feeling like grandma is actually one with the sewing basket, right? Um, when she's not, if, if the sewing basket didn't make it into your home, you would still remember grandma, right? Um, so they're not one and the same. One is a sewing basket and the other are memories of grandma. Um, and if we actually stop for a minute and think about, uh, let's pick grandparents. Um, if you were fortunate enough to know your grandparents and you think back on your memories of your grandparents, is it, do those memories involve stuff or are they memories of activities you did together? I often find that like one of my favorite memories is just simply berry picking with my grandfather. Um, and every year I try to go berry picking, at least raspberries or blueberries or something, whether I need the berries or not, um, just because it's one of my favorite memories of being a child. Um, and so it's not a thing necessarily, it's the memory of picking berries with grandpa, right? Um, so if we think about our memories of our grandparents, they tend to be, when I ask my clients, activities shared, right? Jamming with grandma, um, picking grandma's vegetable garden and helping her make dinner, um, stuff like that. Um, and often holding on to things 
can sometimes just be simply from coming from a place of fear. Like if I let this rocking chair go, random picture here, um, will I lose my memories of whoever that belonged to, right? Um, so um, just to get clear about what memories are and what memorabilia is, um, I think is important. Like we spoke about last week, before jumping into any project, I think it's important to understand where you're going, right? And why you're going there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we move through the next slide. Oh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite cartoons. Um, so this is Dennis the Menace. Um, and he's up in Mr. Oh, I forget his name. It'll come to me. Anyway, so his neighbor is this elderly gentleman and Dennis is up in the attic with him and the gentleman's got a tear in his eye. Mr. Wilson, thank you, Janet. Um, and he's holding, um, I, I think it's a ship that he created as a child in a bottle, right? And it says, if all this stuff is so special, how come it's up, up here instead of downstairs, right? And I think it speaks for itself. Um, next slide. So I think it's important to honor what we do have in some way, um, rather than shoving it in the attic, in the basement, in a storage unit, in a dark corner somewhere. So like I spoke about, it's important to understand why we're gonna take this journey and figure out what we're doing with our stuff. What is this? Why is it here? And whose is it anyway, right? So are they childhood objects? Are they from grandparents, parents, yours, your offspring? I mean, there could be multi-generations there. Whose is it? Um, is it something you inherited from other generations? Um, like a great aunt at one point just left, you know, three bins of photographs on your doorstep because she didn't want to deal with them. And she thought you were the most likely in the family to take care of them. Um, you know, what is this stuff? Um, and am I holding on to it for someone else, really? So um, I've worked with a lot of grandmas, and one in particular, just a delightful woman, gorgeous house in uh, Clinton, I think. She was downsizing considerably um, to go into assisted living, um, and she was holding on to several sets of china for her granddaughter and so i said well how old's granddaughter uh she's 32 okay um and she has her own house and she's established and she's married and she's pregnant with her first child okay um so have we talked to the granddaughter about the china yes and what did she say well she said no but i don't really think that she knows what she wants okay so she may not have known what she wanted when she was, you know, 16 or 24 or 27, but, you know, 32 and married and expecting a baby, she's probably got a pretty good idea of what she wants. Um, so I said, do you mind if we call her and we have a conversation with her? So we did that. And, um, the granddaughter said, well, grandma, I think that I would like a set of six. And so we hung up. And then the grandma was kind of um, really tortured. She was really feeling compelled to keep the whole set together. Um, so we had, we sat down and, and had a conversation about this for some time. And I said, if you really want your granddaughter to have some of this as a memory of you, then I highly recommend that we split it and give her the pieces that she wants and let the rest of it go somewhere else. Um, they really can live separately. They don't have to live together. They can, they'll be fine um, being separated. So um, if you really are holding on to it for someone else, um, get very clear about that. Another very quick story here. Another client I was working in her basement uh, Stonington, lovely home. She was moving to someplace in Groton. Um, and we 
were working in the basement very quickly. It was not a ton of stuff down there, but it, it took probably four hours before we had completed the whole outside, you know, working from the steps, we turned left, we worked and dealt with everything that we came across. And then there was a pile of stuff in the middle of the floor. And I said, well, what is this? And she goes, this is from my sister. I'm holding on to it for her. The rug, the rocking chair, a trunk, and something else. Um, I said, okay, where are they from? And she said, well, they're from mom's house. When mom died, my sister said she wanted those. Okay, when did mom die? Eight years ago. Okay, so where's your sister? Denver. Okay, how often does she get out here? When she does, she flies. It's very irregular. Um, and I said, okay, so what's important with all of these things is what's the next baby step that I can take to make some progress? So I said to her, would you be okay if between now and our next appointment, I contacted a mover that I know to get a rough estimate of what it would cost to ship this to Denver? And she said, absolutely. So I came back with a price of about $1,200. So I said, okay, I want you to text your sister and we're gonna send her a picture of the stuff and ask her if she will send a check for 1200. You need it before the end of February because you're moving the middle of March um, and we'll move this along, right? And then I'll contact a, a mover. They'll come pack it and move it for you. She sent the picture, she sent the text message and it took about four minutes to get a response of, never mind, donate it, right? So the sister did not want to spend the $1,200 to get it shipped to Denver. Um, she'd forgotten that her sister was holding on to it and that it had even been eight years. So what's the next baby step that you can take to figure out if this is really something you're holding on for someone else or not, right? Um, so I think it's important, like I said, to not just dive into your photos or your memorabilia to figure out what is it really. Um, and if it's stuff that when mom and dad passed, you just bought, you know, you ran out of steam, you boxed up the rest of it and you put it in the basement. I hear that a lot, um, very common. Um, so then clients will say to me, well, those eight boxes are, are memorabilia. Okay, well, I'm just going to open them and peek inside. We don't need to do anything with them. We're just going to peek. So then we peek inside. Okay. Um, so I look at it and then she, you know, shares with me. Um, yeah, that was mom and dad stuff that we packed up at the end. So, okay, they're not really memorabilia per se for her, right? their memories and house content for her parents, right? So you wanna make sure too that you're not clinging to someone else's memorabilia. Is it really your memorabilia or is it stuff that belonged to someone else? There's a difference there, there can be. Can be one of the same, can be completely different. Okay, next slide. Um, sometimes too, I'm working with clients and like, um, someone has just passed and they're in the early grieving process. I usually recommend that we hold off for a little bit because I don't want someone to jump in and regret you know, just wiping somebody out of their lives or, or going too far with sorting through memorabilia and the items of a loved one. Um, also with little kids. So anyone that has kids can remember back to when your child would bring home, like, you know, the little handprint here. Um, it go on the fridge and then it goes in a box in the in the closet and then you know that box is marked first grade and then there's second grade and third grade and you know at least that kind of artwork kind of diminishes by this their senior year in high school but um 
you, you know, you keep all of this stuff and you take every single picture. We used to take pictures of our kids' birthday parties and every moment of the birthday party and then order doubles just in case way back uh, when we, you know, ordered prints. Um, and, you know, it's just the cutest birthday party in the whole, whole entire world. Um, and then there's six and then they have another birthday party and you've got another, you know, two whole packets of pictures from that party. Um, I often recommend that people give some distance and some per so that you can get a better perspective of what's, what is the best of the best and what you may want to keep in the long run rather than keeping it all, if that makes sense. So at the end of first grade, you can pare down, um, but I still recommend that you kind of hold on to it until maybe the kid's in the middle of middle school, right? And then you can go back to elementary school and find the best of the best maybe. Um, but it's important um, with children and with, um, you know, grieving a parent or a loss of, of someone that you maybe give it a little time so that in the long run you are keeping the best of the best and um, not overreacting emotionally to, to some certain things. Um, next slide. Oh, and Sandra, I, I see yes. this question too um, about sure. a bit ago. So somebody's asked, what about when you are holding things for mom who is in assisted living? No kids or grandkids want items, but they're still very important to her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, if you have the space, I think it's absolutely fine to hold on to it. Um, I was, I worked with a client about three years ago. Uh, yeah, her mom was going into assisted living and um, the mom was there sometimes and not sometimes as we went through the house. And um, my client was Kathy, the daughter. And um, early in the process of going through the stuff, I suggested to Kathy that she sort of kind of color code certain boxes that we sorted into. So as we went through stuff and mom was there and mom would say, oh, I really want to keep this. If Kathy knew that she wanted it in the long run, that she would hold on to it or use it in the long run, she would put it in one type of box and if it was something that, um, you know, could have, if mom hadn't been there, she would have donated it immediately. Um, she put it in a different box. And the reason I recommended this is because I just wanted to, number one, save her a bunch of time, right? So um, if this is, let's say mom's clothes that she thinks she doesn't have enough that she's taking with her and she wants extras held in storage, but Kathy was never ever going to wear these clothes herself. They were in a different box that she labeled differently, or I can't remember, you know, I think we put a different color tape on them. Um, so that in the long run, um, she didn't have to go through everything again, if that makes sense. Um, that she would have, let's say the boxes were, had green tape on them. Um, she would know that someday when she go, went through everything again, that the ones with green tape could just automatically go to Goodwill. Um, and she wouldn't have to go through all of those again. I don't know if that helps or not, but if you have the space, go ahead and hold on to them. Um, I, I don't know if that answered your question, but you know, give me a signal and let me know if, if, if I miss the mark. Uh, next slide. Also, this is really important for not any kind of organizing. Um, have a deadline, um, even if it's a rough deadline, um, because if there are things in our lives, projects, um, to do things, if they don't have a deadline, um, then they tend to slip a lot. Um, so if you're seriously thinking about um, organizing your photos, let's say, um, and you've got bins and boxes of them, um, then come up with several deadlines and 
sort of like baby steps you can take along the way, right? So these bins and boxes of photographs have probably represent six or seven decades, right? If I know my clients, that's about right. Um, and um, so it's taken that long to accumulate them and probably passed down through several different hands. So it's not something you're likely to get through in a weekend. So I recommend that you have a couple of dates that are rough, like my first bullet here. Have thought about what this project looks like when it's done. Right, so the, by the middle of February, I'm going to go and sit and look at my bins and my boxes. And I'm gonna think about um, whose pictures are these? Do I know who these people are? are? Is the end goal a Shutterfly book just for me? Is the end goal, um, that I separate out into three different boxes for my children and they each get a box and I don't want any of it. Um, what, when this project's done, um, what does that mean for you? What is, what is done? What is done for you for that, right? Okay, so then you can say by the end of March, I'm gonna use some snowy days and such to start going through the bins and I'm going to throw out blurry photos and I'm gonna throw out duplicates and I'm gonna throw out all the negatives because I'm not interested in um, you know, making sure I have every print of everything because if you're standing there and you're looking at seven bins of, of photos, you're coming from a place of plenty, right? Um, and to finish this thought and then I'll go back to plenty. Um, and then by, let's say, the middle of April, I'm going to um, then go through the pictures and I'm going to eliminate any people that I don't know and um, or set them aside and ask the oldest person in my family who these people are. Um, because if we don't do that soon, um, we may never know who's in the photos, right? So we need to grab that information while we can. Um, or if they're simply like pictures of, of somebody's garden, you know, vegetables growing. I don't know who they are, but you know, do I really want to keep that? If I know it's a special garden, I may want to keep it otherwise, whatever. Um, and then um, there can be the next step of by the middle of May, I'm going to go through the photos, keep the best of the best and sort them into boxes by decade, right? Um, so, a couple of um, quick stories. What time is it? Yeah. Um, so when my father started getting dementia, I really wanted to, um, he took slides. He had a whole closet of those silver trays full of slides. Every tray held four or 500 slides. Um, and I knew they were in a closet at mom and dad's house. And I said, dad, why don't we work on getting these um, digitized so we can enjoy them? No, he got a little mean when he had Alzheimer's. So um, the answer was always no. And so I let it go. I didn't wanna agitate him or upset him. Um, after he passed about five years ago, um, I started using one day of my visits to my mom. I live in Connecticut, mom lives in Michigan. So I would fly in to Michigan about three or four times a year. And I would use one day of every visit. I usually stay about a week, one or two days of every visit. I would go through pictures. Now, what I was thrilled to discover was that dad actually hand wrote on every slide. So I knew the date and where it was, um, which was phenomenal. And my mom, um, big old farmhouse, they have like one of everything. So she had a light table, <laughs> which was really handy. Um, so I would get the light table out and I would, you know, put the slides out. Um, he had them in chronological order. Um, and if the, my brother and sister and I carved pumpkins for Halloween, dad would take, um, you know, three pictures of each pumpkin separately. And then, you know, three pictures of all the pumpkins together. So the Halloween carving um, justified about 15 
pictures, right? So I would look on the at the pictures and keep like two of my favorite, one of my favorite, and move on. And I would throw away the rest. And I went from having 15 of those silver trays of slides to three that represented mom and dad um, dating, getting married, having all of us kids through all of us high school. Um, went from 15 of those trays to three because I eliminated um, duplicates and blurry. And, you know, he was, he loved taking pictures of um, fireworks. So every 4th of July, couple rolls there. Um, so winnowed it down. Um, and that took me three years, um, probably four days, for probably 12, 12 full days, but it was flying out to mom and visiting and spending time with her. And, and um, so probably 12 full days to do just that over the course of three years. Then I flew home with those three trays of slides and um, and I had heard really good things about Charter Oak scanning at Stonington Village. And so I went and I met Robert Webb. He's fantastic. If you decide to use him, um, ask him for my discount. Tell him Sandra Wheeler sent you and you want her discount, NAPO discount. Um, he's terrific. And so I left one tray of slides with him at a time because this was my entire upbringing, right? And I didn't want, God forbid, um, a fire or something to happen and to lose it all. So I took one tray at a time and that took, you know, a couple of months. He'd have them for a month and then I'd pick them up and I looked at them. They were fantastic. Took one more tray, did the same thing back and forth. Um, and then I didn't actually have time to sit down with the digital version and for about another year. Um, and then I sat down, uh, it took me about a week. Um, I'd had a surgery and I wasn't supposed to be doing much. And so it gave me a great excuse. And I tagged and um, I tagged every picture. So by, by tagging, I put in descriptors of um, year and month and who was in the picture and where it was taken place. Um, and that is huge. Um, because at one point um, I had another relative that passed and the my cousin called me and asked if I had any great pictures and I was able to go into my file and sort by my aunt's name everything came up chronologically and I was able to just send it to her right away and she was floored um, so and you can use that type of file for all kinds of things like when your kids graduate from high school and you want like a rolling slideshow of them growing up or um, all kinds of stuff um, funerals celebrations of life etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, but the reason i'm saying that is it took me i would say okay so then everything was tagged then i went through all the pictures again and i uploaded the best of the best and put them into Shutterfly. And when that's what I did as soon as COVID hit, right? So we were going to be shut down for the month of March, I think it was. And I had no clients that wanted me in their home. And so I stayed home and I uploaded all of those pictures into Shutterfly and, you know, very creatively moved pictures around and labeled them and tagged them and did all kinds of stuff. It ended up being a hundred page book from Shutterfly and I was able to finish it and have a copy to my mom for her Mother's Day gift 2020 and a copy to my sister and I got a copy for myself. Um, so, you know, it ended up taking five years, um, but it went from an entire closet of slides at my parents' house to each of us getting a hundred page book that represents us growing up. Um, and again, I think I saw the question, yep, Charter Oak Scanning, Robert Webb, he's fantastic. Really, really, really good. He's in the Velvet Mill, if you've ever been there. Really good. Um, if you don't live locally, I believe he'll actually meet you halfway. He travels around the state, so good guy. Um, he also, we had, uh, yeah, so when my in-laws passed, that was kind of while I was 
probably smiling before when I said, you know, somebody dumps a bunch of bins on your doorstep. I ended up with um, six boxes of framed photos, photo albums, all kinds of hodgepodge from my in-laws because um, all of my brother and sister-in-laws felt I was the only one that was probably going to do anything with it all. Um, and after I finished my album during COVID, I worked on theirs. And again, they've got, they've each got a hundred page, um, went from like seven large boxes that I got to a um, hundred page photo book. Gorgeous, delightful. Happy to show them to you anytime. They're really fabulous. Um, okay, next slide. All right, so I always, almost always, 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 and my clients get so tired of hearing this, but to sort like with like, whether it's your um, sneakers, your book collection, your um, pile of leggings to um, whatever, um, jewelry, all of it, put it like with like so that you have all of your photos, your videos, your albums, your slides, your home movies, all in one place, right? Um, then you come from a place of plenty like your kids' artwork when they were little, right? Now they're 20 and you've got boxes of artwork. Um, bring it all together so that you come from a place of plenty and you realize that you have plenty and that you can let go of some of it and keep the very best of the best. I worked with a client, um, New London. She inherited the house so grandma and grandpa lived in the house grandma died grandma and grandpa were a little bit of hoarders they were hoarders um grandma died grandpa went through a depression obviously um mom moved in right his daughter and then um dad died grandpa died mom lived there hadn't taken care of any of grandma and grandpa's stuff. And then she did a little bit of hoarding herself. And then unexpectedly, uh, very unexpectedly at the age of 62, mom died. And my client, um, early thirties, inherited the whole shebang. Um, she had lived there for four years and her stuff was still in the pod in the backyard. Um, that had been packed from her prior home elsewhere and moved to the backyard to then incorporate into the house. And she'd been there for four years and had yet to do that. She was still sleeping on the couch because she hadn't figured out what bedroom she wanted to clear so that she could actually sleep in a bed. Um, so she called me. And um, she was adamant about her memorabilia. She said, I will not throw anything away that was grandma's, nothing that was grandpa's, nothing that, you know, and, and adamant about cookbooks, right? So this was like six years ago where, you know, still internet, you can look up almost any recipe in the entire world, but she wanted every single cookbook. Um, so I said, I am not going to throw away anything that you want to keep. Um, we first cleared the dining room so that we'd have some space to work on the table as we worked through other rooms. And I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. And I put a big sign in one corner, grandpa, big sign in another corner, grandma, big sign in another corner, mom, and a fourth corner was cookbooks. Those were her um, deal breakers. She was not going to let go of any of that. So then as we moved through the house, um, we would find things like on the dresser in grandpa's room was a mason jar full of coins and odd keys and his false teeth. And so as soon as we saw that, she said, you know, burst into tears and said, I have to keep that because I remember that being on grandpa's dresser. So we put it in that corner in the dining room. So we continued moving through the house. We didn't keep everything that belonged to grandpa or everything that belonged to grandma, but we kept the best that she said, you know, grandpa's military uniform, we're putting that in the corner. Grandpa's military medals, we're putting that in his corner. Love letters from grandpa to grandma when he was gone, put that in grandma's corner. Um, so we continued to do that until we'd finished the project. Then we went back to each corner and I had her sit in a chair facing just that corner. Here's all of grandpa. And the memories, what you are calling memorabilia of grandpa. Um, not that grandpa's sitting there. Um, 
And she was able to let go of the jar of coins and the false teeth and the keys and those types of things because she realized she had his military uniform that we could then put in a shadow box and hang on the wall. Um, and we did that and we lined the back of it with love letters and we put medals in there and we were able to get most of the grandma and grandpa memorabilia that she really cherished into one shadow box. It was, uh, I would say, almost three feet. Um, but we were able to hang it in the hallway. Um, it wasn't very thick, um, so it didn't really jut out much. But um, it was a way to really honor the two of them without keeping absolutely everything. Um, and this pile here is pretty close to how many cookbooks were <laughs> were kept when I left her to figure that out. Um, but to bring things together and to come from a place of plenty and to be able to keep the best of the best um, is, is a, a good way to start going about it rather than keeping all of it. Next slide. I don't want to run out of time and not have time for questions. Okay, this was a favorite quote of mine. Um, my youngest son, when he was like six, he came home with this quote from school somehow, he, literally first, first grade, um, and he wanted me to help him frame it. And so he always had it in his room. It cracked me up. But it, it's one of my favorite quotes now with my clients. Um, but nothing is as necessary for success as the single-minded pursuit of an objective, right? So really focusing on what you're doing, what it is, what is it, is it worth keeping? Do I love it? Do I use it? Will I love it? Will I use it? How will I honor it? Break projects down, like I talked about with um, working on the slides and my own um, photo book. Um, and when I first started doing this, I, I realized as I was working with clients, I said, well, do your kids know that that's important and that, you know, great grandma made the afghan that's draped over your couch. Um, how can we mark things or leave notes so that anyone left to go through our stuff, inevitably we're all going, um, and there's going to be somebody left to have to go through the stuff. And so I would come home and I would clearly mark, um, I have a little wooden pig that was hand carved by my dad when I was like 14. It's adorable. Um, and it sat next to the TV for a long time. Now it's up on a, a shelf in my bedroom. Um, but I turned him over and I took a little Sharpie and I put grandpa's name on there and the date year that I think he made it. So that someday when my husband or my kids or whoever is going through my crap, um, they will at least be informed about my crap, right? So, oh, grandpa made this. Now they can fight over it or they can donate it, but it'll be up to them and it'll be an informed decision that they then make. Um, my grandfather used to actually make rope. He was a farmer. Um, and then he would take that rope and he wove it and he would make um, stool legs, wooden stool legs, and then he would weave the top and it would be this woven rope stool. And um, he gave it me one uh, for a wedding gift. Um, and I came home and wrote on that as well, right? I wrote inside one of the legs that it was made by my grandfather so that the next generation um, can make an informed decision about that stool. Um, so if you have things in your life that you're holding on to because they're fabulous, wonderful memories, um, you know, make sure that you mark it somehow so that uh, the next generation knows that was actually tatted by great grandma or um, whatever it is that you have. All right, next. Um, so like I said, get your perspective, right? So um, give it time if it's, um, you know, children's artwork or give it time also if you can after someone has passed. Um, you know, if you need to load up the last eight boxes and bring them home, um, you know, clearly label them. Um, the last of mom's house um, and the date, 
right? Um, and give it time. Put it on your calendar for a year or 18 months from now or something. And um, when that shows up on your calendar, go and open a box and see if you can make progress. If you can't yet, um, you know, you could call in a professional organizer to help you and give you some perspective also, um, or give it some more time or call in a good friend or somebody to sit with you and have conversations with you about, about the stuff. Also, who's the, who's the intended audience, right? So um, for the slides, the slide project, the intended audience I felt was my mom and my brothers and sisters, right? So that's who um, the audience was. And I actually um, purposefully made sure that my brothers and sisters were represented equally in the book. It wasn't all about me. Um, uh, yeah. So who's the intended audience and why am I doing it? What is it for? Also in keeping it real, what is the time, energy, cost, and effort to do this? I have had some clients that'll say, well, I'm just going to have the whole seven boxes. I'm going to take them to Robert at Charter Oak Scanning and have him scan all of it. And then I'll think about it later. Uh, I put a pause on that. Number one, it's going to cost you money to get that done. And now you've just got maybe two thumb drives of clutter, right? Um, so like I said before, take some time to, to winnow it down to the best of the best and then put the cost in to the best of the stuff um, and how much effort you're gonna put into it. You don't wanna make a lifetime out of it. You wanna give yourself a bit of a deadline. Like even with the Shutterfly books that I was creating, you can get lost in there for hours adding embellishments and changing fonts and colors and all kinds of stuff. Um, at some point you wanna call it, you know, done, um, good enough. Um, and sometimes it's not a one-time event. Sometimes if you've got the eight boxes left from mom's house, um, you can go through there and um, winnow it down to three and then change the date on it and put it in your calendar again for the following year. Um, but if you've labeled the boxes, then if something happens to you, um, then people that are going through the house will at least know this was grandma's stuff from her house that mom didn't quite get through. Um, so that people will understand the content of the boxes, like where it came from. Okay, uh, I think there was another question. Yeah, Sherry asked, do you throw out the original photos after they are scanned? <laughs> that is up to you. Um, I did. With the slides, the last three trays, I, I'll be honest, I held on to the three trays of slides for another year after I had finished the box, the book. And because um, I've because they were all handwritten on by my father, um, it was hard for me to do it. So I actually asked one of my sons to do it for me. I said, take these three trays out to the garbage bin and throw them away. And then I'm gonna donate the trays. Um, but I realized I had his handwriting elsewhere um, and I didn't need those three trays of slides just for my dad's handwriting. And I have not only the physical book, I have the electronic book in Shutterfly, um, and I have all of those pictures in the cloud and on a thumb drive. I replicated the thumb drive and gave, sent it to my sister, so there's another thumb drive in California. So there's lots of different places where all those photos are, and I didn't need to keep, um, and I do, I talk to my clients. I'm like, okay, you can get all of this, elect, you know, digitized, right? But then, are you gonna throw away the, the photographs? Well, no, no, I'm not gonna do that. And I said, okay, then why are you digitizing them, right? You could just make an album of the actual photos. Um, so, uh, I'm reading a question, sorry. Um, forgot where I was, I was reading the question. Um, oh, I was working with a client, right? So you can get them digitized, 
but then I would recommend that you throw away the actual photos. If you want the actual photos, then why digitize them? I mean, like one or the other. Um, it's like a lot of my clients, they'll want to scan their paperwork, but then they don't want to actually throw away the paperwork. So now you've just got clutter in two different places, right? So if you want to actually do like creative memory scrapbooking with um, the actual photos, um, you know, that's fine to do that too, doing the best of the best and winnowing it down and then actually throwing away the rest. Yeah. Um, I recently had a client, <laughs> she was um, trying to get her house ready for a graduation party. This was last, yeah, last spring, year ago. Um, so we were in the basement and we were working on the finished basement area. And every time we came down the stairs, we had to walk kind of past this really large overflowing bin. Um, and I said, what's this? And she goes, oh, we're not gonna work on that. I said, okay. So then we worked in the, in the main area and made that all lovely for the party. And then um, we were starting to work on, there was another, there's a restroom down there and another room that we were working on. And I, we passed this large bin. I said, What's, oh, we're not gonna work on that today. And I said, okay. So then the next visit, uh, we were finalizing for the party. And I said, oh no, no. We're, she said, no, we're just gonna slide this bin into the other room. And I said, I want you to sit down and just tell me what the bin is because I could tell it was really super emotional for her every time I brought it up. And I, I wanted her to just state to me what it was. So um, her mother, her father passed years ago. Her mom remarried. My client will call her Lori. Um, it's not her name. She disliked the new husband of mom immensely. Um, she disliked his daughter even more. Um, and when somebody passed, who passed? Okay, my Lori, my client's mother passed. The daughter of the other husband, right? Literally called this woman, said, are you gonna be home today? And she said, yes. And she dropped off this massive bin of photo albums and just packets of photos and loose photos and everything else left over from um, when she helped her father move downsize his house. So my client was avo avoiding the bin completely because she knew she was gonna run into pictures of this man. She disliked immensely. <clears throat> And he loved to garden and take pictures of his trees in his backyard. So he had a bazillion pictures of that. Um, and what my client wanted at some point was to be able to go through this huge bin and pull out just the pictures of her mother. And so I said, because I had set her up to start working on some paperwork, um, I said, are you comfortable with me sitting here while you're doing that? I'm available for questions. I will throw away any pictures of this man. And I confirmed who we were talking about. And I will keep all pictures of this woman. Um, confirmed that that was her mom. Um, I will keep anything I'm completely unsure of. But I'll throw away garden and I'll throw away trees and I'll throw away landscape. If there's nobody in it, blah, 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 blah. She said, oh, my God, that would be huge. But it's going to take forever. And I said, you know, let's, we're gonna work for another hour. So I'll work on this, you work on that, ask me any questions you want. I literally got through the whole bin in an hour. Number one, it was much quicker for me because it wasn't emotional. Um, I was single focused looking for this specific woman and letting go of anything that was just landscape or anything that had this man in it. Um, and we went from this very large bin that was overflowing to a very much smaller bin of just pictures of just her mother and anything I had a question about. And she burst into tears when we were done because that was the one step in three years that she had not been able to get past. And that bin had sat at the bottom of her basement stairs straight on and she passed it every single time she went to the basement, came back up and I'm sure conscious or not, it registered for her that that was what was going on.
and we took out you know two big black garbage bags um, to her garbage bin and she was ready to just let them go so sometimes it's just you know getting over that first big hump and then um, taking a minute you know to then eventually go through her smaller bin of her mom and just be able to see her mom she didn't want the rest of it all right next slide um okay oh wow we're running out of time okay um so think creatively we're thinking back to um mr wilson there um here's another story we were go i went to a client's house she said we're going to work in the attic so we went up to the attic um on the way up we went up this kind of curved stairs with this weird like platform halfway up that nothing was on there and i kind of stopped and she said i know it's kind of a weird design and i said oh it's interesting you could display something here so we continued on we went up to the attic she ended up um massively purging she was so ready to get through her attic and memorabilia and all the rest of it we got to this saddle and um these cute boots western boots that probably fit like a 15 year old um and she said this is non-negotiable this is when i was riding these are my boots this is one of the happiest times of my life blah 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 i just need to like polish up the saddle and um i said we need to figure out a place for you to display it it brings such joy to you it shouldn't be up here in the attic as we're going downstairs for her to write me a check to finish the session i stopped at that weird little shelf again and i said what if you put the saddle here and the little boot, the boots they're so cute um and i think that's what she did so sometimes it's just really thinking out of the box about the stuff that really does bring you joy and how to display it so that when you come down the stairs every single morning you have a smile on your face seeing your childhood saddle um this isn't the version of the shadow box i did with the um the client in New London, but it's a similar one of um, memorabilia displayed and showcasing, you know, a prior generation and clearly writing on the back who it represents, everything else, the time frame, and um, leaving it clear so that the next generation can make an informed decision about it and you can enjoy it in the meantime. Next slide. Um, again, love it, use it, display it. Um, we have taken vintage jewelry and turned it into magnets to put on the fridge so that great grandma's brooch um, now holds children's artwork, um, adorable. Um, you can get a dad's flannel shirt and a pair of his jeans made into a teddy bear. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff. You don't have to keep the whole shirt you don't have to keep every shirt you don't have to keep all the stuff you can keep a representation of it you can have a teddy bear made from grandpa's flannel shirts for each of the great grandkids or something and um you know actually this one you can actually put initials or dates on the feet you can do all kinds of stuff next slide um this is an example of a pillow made out of dad's ties the best of the best if dad used to wear some fun and loud ties keep the best turn them into something put it on the couch love it um this isn't the um quilt but my kids went to camp hazen each for 10 years and um one kid did fencing you know all kinds of whatever they were into i kept the t-shirts that represented um the best of all that stuff and then when i drove out to michigan for a road trip during covid because i didn't want to fly i i just love the spirits that have passed on before me because they steer me in the right direction all of the time i went into where i keep luggage to pack to go visit my mom i turned around and i happened to notice the box of t-shirts that represented my kids growing up. And I thought if I'm driving, I'm taking it with me. My mom is a massive quilter. And someday I'll take a picture of it and actually use it in my slides. But while I was out there, what I was planning to do was help her to lay them out and to distinguish Mason from Jackson. Um, but in the week that I was there, we actually finished both of the boys' quilts and it was their Christmas presents from grandma, 2020. Um, 
they're lap quilts and they are fantastic. Um, and the kids love them. Um, they're 25 and 23, um, but they are, um, they adore them and they will adore them in the future. So it's their, you know, t-shirts and stuff from major events when they were growing up. First time scuba diving, et cetera, et cetera. Fun vacations. Um, yeah, so you can take a uh, rock concert t-shirts or whatever you have and have them made into a quilt for the guest room bed or, or to hang on a wall or whatever. Next. Um, so there is a book. I brought it upstairs so you could actually see that I have it. It's a very easy read. I don't know if you can see it. It's called The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. Um, when it came out shortly after the Maria Kondo, um, the art of tidying up and uh, does it spark joy? Um, yeah, this one came out and I thought, well, I should read it because a lot of times my clients ask me about current organizing books. Um, this woman's concept is a little extreme in some cases. She didn't want the girls fighting over her jewelry, so she just sold it all and gave them the cash while she was still living, which I think is a little extreme. Sometimes, you know, your daughters may want a piece of jewelry. Um, but anyway, one of the quotes that I thought was fantastic from her book was, do not ever imagine that anyone will wish or be able to schedule time off from their life, their family, their world, to take care of what you didn't bother to take care of yourself, no matter how much they love you. <laughs> so um, as you're working through the memorabilia of others, um, after that, um, then I recommend that you go back through your stuff. And like I said, if it means something to you, um, make a way to, to make it clear why it means something to you. Um, so that the next generation, um, and if it doesn't mean anything to you, um, because I have worked with hundreds of clients in the last 15 years, and some people will say, well, I packed up mom, mom's whole apartment and brought it here because it was in her apartment. It must have been important to her. Not necessarily so, right? Not everything in my house is that important to me. Some of it's just functional and useful. Some of it I haven't gotten to yet. Um, but, um, you know, absolutely having what you use and love and making it clear to the next generation why you do love certain things that you do love um, is very helpful for them. Otherwise, they're left guessing and keeping a lot more than you ever wish that they would. Um, next slide. Oh, you have the book at the library. Yay, it's a good one. It's an easy read. It's really breezy, breezy. Um, it, and like I said, it's, um, it's extreme in some cases. So, you know, take what you love. Um, so like I said, your legacy, someone someday will be tasked with your stuff. Will they know what's important to you? Have only what you use and love and identify clearly um, why you love what you do love so that the next generation will have some clue. Next slide. And collect moments, not things, right? Um, yeah. So even like with gift giving, if you can give people moments and time, moments like your time, right? So a gift certificate for a whole afternoon with you, you'll treat them to lunch, you'll go to a movie of their choosing, um, you know, whatever, whatever they wanna do. It's a picnic of their choice, wherever they wanna do that. Um, family passes to the aquarium so that the family itself can have all kinds of moments that they remember rather than um, giving people stuff all the time. I think a lot of times we have plenty already. Questions? I know it's seven. I'm willing to stay. If anybody's got questions, you can also email me, um, call me. Yeah, I want to say thank you, Sandra, again, for all this information. And I, I was um, going to just say if it's, oh, you know what? I'm going to stop recording and stop screen sharing too, because sometimes, um, okay. sometimes the knowledge of recording is not the, uh, <laughs> the chillest um, participation incentive. Hang on. Yeah.